Questions to the Cabinet members will now be taken. Question number 12, Councillor Ambush. Question number 12 to the Cabinet member, please. Uh, thank you, Councillor Ambush, for your question. And um, it, it's a good question because I know and we all agree that um, it is tough times for special needs in, in schools. But um, we have, we, our schools are actually um, managing particularly well compared with other schools in London. And in fact, we've got in the lowest quartile for London boroughs for overspend. So our schools are rise, rising to the challenge there. Um, the overspend, particularly because of the high needs budget, is going to be about 900,000 this year. But the short-term um, tackling of this is very much down to the schools forum, and that's the group of schools working together to find out the best way to, to deal with this overspend. And I really pay credit to the schools, because they have really stepped up to the plate on this. And particularly a small group which has been set up called the High Needs blo um, Block Group, which is actually beyond the schools forum. It's other schools who've decided to come together to try and help each other and sort things out. And they've met six times already this year. And they put their, their suggestions to the schools forum back in October. Um, and the suggestion was that all, all um, providers, all schools, all PRUs, all special needs schools should provide half a percent of their budget towards helping out the schools, um, the high needs block. And this was agreed, and this was agreed by the schools themselves. The long-term strategy is, is obviously, will take obviously more time, but the long-term strategy is to make sure that those children with edu education, health and care plans are actually placed more in our schools in the borough. And, um, that's, and in fact, we've got a question later on about um, bases and ASD bases, etc. So the more we have children not going out to expensive placements or independent schools outside borough, the more that, comes in, that come in. And the other area which we have to keep a very weather eye on is benchmarking ourselves against other, other boroughs where we're spending. And I can see, and I'm sure Councillor Ambash knows that too, that we're actually spending more on post-19 provision than many other boroughs. And that's something we've really got to work with the FE colleges to come to some sort of agreement on that. Um, just, there is a, um, there's a table which shows exactly where the money will be coming from from each of the types of provider in, in, within Wandsworth. And actually, when you take into account that schools, if you combine all their carryovers, all their um, reserves, which they're sitting on 40 million pounds of reserves, what they're going to contribute to helping out the high needs block is absolutely minuscule. And that was a schools forum decision. Supplementary, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Ambash. Can I thank the cabinet member for her answer? But I would like to say that she has failed to answer my question three about the effect on SEN children. And you have again trotted out this 40 million in reserves, which is mostly not in special schools. Many schools don't have any reserves at all. And I'm not convinced that the cut of one and a half million will have relatively little impact on special education needs. So as this is such a serious problem in London-wide, why doesn't the Cabinet member indicate support for the London Council's campaign across London to increase funding for special education needs to a realistic level rather than cut the service? Thank you, Councillor Attenbash. Um, I, I don't think you really understand the role of the Schools Forum. This particular decision was taken by the Schools Forum with input from the High Needs Block subgroup and they were the ones who decided that the impact on their, their support for children in their schools would be minuscule. And they decided that this half a percent would go towards all, all um, the high needs block. And as for supporting special needs and, and um, lobbying for, for more budget for special needs, you know that I'm doing that. We've mentioned this several times. And in fact, I'm um, in the process of arranging a meeting with, with the minister, um, Minister Sahawi, particularly talk about this. So we are on the case and this is a schools forum decision for their own good. Second supplemental, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Dawson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as the Cabinet member knows, uh, Councillor Crivelli and I had the opportunity of speaking with the Minister at the recent Conservative Party conference. So I, particularly about SEN funding. So I wonder, um, as well as lobbying him, 
you might care to invite him to uh, Wandsworth to see the excellent work being done at our SEN facilities and resources, especially, Mr. Mayor, as Honorary Alderman Sahawi did extend his best wishes to the borough. Cabinet Member. Thank you, Councillor Dawson. I think that's an excellent idea. And um, as you rightly say, we have some wonderful facilities here for special needs children. I would be delighted to show him around. Right, the whips have agreed that we cut short um, questions. All right. Back to question 13. Councillor Dawson. No, question 13 to the Cabinet Member for Education. Thank you, Councillor Dawson. A question about um, the Roeha Roehampton regeneration. I sort of feel this probably is more for Councillor Caddy than me, but I, w I will deal with the, the sort of financial and re regeneration part of it. But actually, the, um, before the Roehampton Club is going to be um, closed and um, um, not being used by the, the, the young people there, the base refurbishment is definitely going to be sorted out first. And also, we've got this rather interesting idea of having a mobile van, a mobile youth club, which is being procured at the moment. Um, so the, 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 the base um, will be ready in March 2019. And the, um, I've asked particularly to find out about this mobile provision, and that apparently is going to be up and running, ready for the summer, when um, there are a lot more activities for young people in Roehampton. Supplemental question. Mr. Mayor, um, in thanking the Cabinet Member, um, as she will recall, it was a particular concerning of the Education OSC about the timing for these interim measures. So, um, obviously, very much welcome uh, her, her comments and her time frame. Anything that can be done to expedite it, either by her or Councillor Caddy, much appreciated. Um, and I just wonder um, whether, in fact, in the more general phrase, uh, frame, framework, uh, this example and also all the developments in Winstanley and York Road are a real example of Wandsworth Conservatives delivering for all through major regeneration. Absolutely agree with that. I think both, both with the, um, the Roehampton and the uh, Winstanley York Road, there are some fantastic opportunities which we are grasping both hands to provide better services and, and facilities for young people, better facilities for children and, and families, and it's just what we should be doing, working with developers to make sure that they help us put back into our communities what our people really want. Second supplementary. Councillor um, McKinney. One question about the um, base. Are you also having conversations with Regenerate, the other youth club, down the road from the base? to make sure that they know what's happening? Yeah, we can certainly have um, conversation regeneration. I will follow that up. Question 14, Councillor Denfield. Question 14 to the Cabinet Member. I thank the Councillor for his question. As can be seen from the written answer, that has already agreed with uh, the contractor, and I hope that they will also be providing uh, services in addition to stay and play as well. Supplementary question, Mr. Uh, Mayor. Councillor Graham's amendment to the original paper required six hours of stay and play to be provided per week, whilst Councillor Senior's answer states that the stay and play will be provided for six hours per week during term time. Can the Cabinet Member please confirm that the provision will be as per Councillor Graham's amendment that was accepted by a vote in the committee? Uh, following further discussions with TFC, I am quite happy that there will be further discussions with them to see whether this can be extended uh, from term time to all year round as well. Question 15, the Cabinet Member for Education and Children's Services, Councillor Birchall. Yes, sir. Can I have question 15 from Cabinet Member for Children? You can, can, thank you, Councillor Birchall. Um, yes, I, I, I'm delighted to, to, in fact, it's set out in, in the question and, and the answer on the paper, but um, we are particularly forward-thinking with our support for, for special needs and um, particularly in the fact that they are provided, um, supported, provided in mainstream schools. It's where it should be supported, if at all possible. 
Um, for example, Riversdale Primary School has a, um, has a base now for autistic and um, speech and language for key stage and key, key stage one and key stage two children. And in October at St. John Bosco's College, um, the Devera base was opened to add to the Savio base as well. And in fact, Councillor Crivelli and Councillor Dawson and I went to visit that um, last week and we were um, very impressed with it and obviously the school are rightly proud of the, the service they give to children with really quite severe special needs who are actually looked after in, in the college itself. So, and they, they are separate from the college but they have that chance to go in and, and work with the other students as, as needs. B. And then also um, nearer to where my board in, in Nightingale, just over into Bedford, in Ra the Ravenstone School has a base which is going particularly well and was opened in 2017 and that's got some very high quality provision. So um, just to, to bring it all together, we've got two preschool bases for children with ASD, six bases for primary school children with ASD and speech and language, three secondary bases for young people with ASD and speech and language, a primary base for children with moderate learning difficulties, and a primary and secondary resource base for hearing impairment. I think we are really leading the way in our support for special needs. Uh, question 16 oh. of the cabinet member. Can I? Oh, we have a cut. Yeah, cut to Birchall. Um, thank you very much for your very full answer. I just wanted to say, do you feel that the best option for children with special educational needs is to be at a school near their home? Thank you, Councillor Birchall. Yes, and um, I, mean, I certainly agree. And if I had a child with special needs, I would want it to be as near home as possible to cut the travel time so they're part of their local community. And also, that, uh, you know, there's masses of evidence and expert evidence to say that is the case. And of course, the byproduct of that is that we're not having to pay for them to go out of borough, which costs a lot of money with taxes, also costs a lot of money to go to these um, schools beyond the borough independent schools, which means there's more money to be ploughed back into their support in the borough. Question 16 of the Cabinet Member for Education and Children's Services, Councillor Rigby. Yeah, um, question 16 to the Cabinet Member. Thank you, Councillor Rigby. Um, this actually, this is deja vu. I'm sure we've talked about this many times and nothing has changed. So in a way, you're not going to learn anything new from this, but there was an equalities impact in these assessments at the time. So it was very, very carefully sorted that there was no discrimination um, having the impact there. You talk about five particular children. I think, I feel I'm also going to casework. It's not really appropriate to talk about these particular five children. Um, but in general, Children of that very young age aren't automatically sent to special schools. That is not the right place for them. They have to be very, very carefully assessed to find out the best support possible and, and, and use the facilities we've got across the borough. And I, as set out in the, in the answer, we've got some really expert um, places who can support early years children with special needs and that adds to the lovely long list I said in the last question which is also about supporting special needs. So for example we've got Hillbrook Primary School and Eastwood Nursery School, we've got the fabulous three maintained nursery schools who really work very well with SEND children with early years, Ballam, Eastwood and Somerset and then we've got particular specialist um, provision at Greenmead, Linden Lodge and Paddock um, and I think the, the point with your question is that Every special needs child, you know, when they're really from a very early age, have to be assessed particularly carefully. They can't, it's not just presumed that they will all go to a certain school. Each one will have a school or a placement matched exactly to their, to their need. And um, in Wandsworth, inclusion is our absolute top priority. So um, including them as much as possible in schools and, and um, early years provisions is, is the best way. Su supplementary question. 
Okay, so I just want to correct you. You should know that placements are reassessed annually, so that saying it traps a child until they're 19 is irrelevant and wrong. The fathers of these children are in the gallery tonight, and they'd love nothing more for their children to be capable of entering a mainstream nursery, and they know their kids better than somebody who might know what it might be like if they had a child with special needs. These children need care now, and all the nurseries you've identified in your response have been shown as early as today to have been unsuitable, all except Greenmead. These children will be excluded and discriminated against by being forced into a mainstream nursery before they are ready. So the question is, what will you do? What will you do to... I'm asking the question... So... Your, the question is, that's come from the fathers of these children, what will you do to ensure that these children are able to access the care they desperately require and address the fallout of the closure of Sirewood Road, which is proving catastrophic for them? Thank you, Councillor Rigby. As we've, as we've debated and discussed many times before, Sirewood Road was very good at the time it, uh, it, at the time it provided that, that uh, expert help. Things have moved, things have moved, across, things have moved along across the whole of the special needs um, provision um, and e expertise in that. E provision is now far better in schools which are um, on early years basis, which are specially designed to help these children be included. I will personally work with officers, and I'm doing that at the moment, and I have been in touch about these particular five children. I will personally work with officers to make sure that the best place is found for those children to have the best start in life and to get on as much as they can in life. Councillor Angela Graham. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. As I listen to this discussion tonight, and this is not a speech, I am very sad that special education children are being used as a political football. I really think that really is below the belt. Below the belt. I, I visited the families within my ward, and I've also visited Sywood Road, and I really do praise the officers' experience in Sywood Road. Councillor Graham, I, can we have the question, quest, please? My question, yeah, my, my question is that I really do believe there is a lot of support there, but my question is... Uh, can we have the question, please, Councillor Graham? We are a borough which has inclusion as a priority. Councillor Graham, what's the question? Cabinet, my, the, right, Act, Act 2, Scene 3. I'm going to ask the Cabinet member, would she agree that we are a borough which has inclusion as a priority. Thank, thank you, Councillor Graham. Yes, inclusion is a, is a top priority, and I will repeat what I've just said to Councillor Rigby. I will be personally working with officers to make sure that every one of these children that she refers to is given a very, very good um, support and is found the best match for their child. And as for inclusion, I think I will refer back to um, a wonderful... Um, a wonderful um, um, debate we had some young children who are special needs themselves about how they would feel included and we have well, there's a post you can see it around lots of schools now it's called the 10 top tips for inclusion and that is made up by children with special needs about how they can feel included in schools and that is being taken up by schools across the borough and it is our mantra inclusion is top priority Mr. Mayor Mr. Mayor Councillor uh, Mr. Mayor uh, understanding Order 25, I'd like to move a motion to move to the next order of business. Is that seconded? Is that agreed by the Council? Is that agreed by the Council? We now turn to report number one, items for decision. I move reception of that report and will ask the Council whether they approve the recommendations in each paragraph. Paragraph one, local plan partial review employment and industrial land. Is the recommendation approved? Yes. Paragraph 2, mid-year review of Treasury management in 2018-19. Is the recommendation approved? Yes. Paragraph 3, 
International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance definition of anti-Semitism. Is the recommendation Mr. approved? Mr. Matt, Mr. Matt, may I request a recorded vote, please, Mr. Matt? Is this a division? Okay, it's a division. Councillors allowed back in the full council chamber if there is a division and yes, the bell has stopped. Uh, councillors, so this is a recorded vote. Um, uh, I'll just read out the recommendation to council. Uh, the, the recommendation is that the council adopts the full IHRA formal definition of anti Semitism into its relevant policies, authorises the head of human resources to make necessary changes to the published staff code of conduct and authorises the monitoring officer to make the necessary changes to the member code of conduct following consultation of those changes with members of the standards committee and the council's independent persons. Uh, so I'll call your name out, councillors, if you could uh, just indicate... Mr. Mayor, may I speak? Um, is, is there any... No. No, no, no you can't It's in... You can't speak. So, so councillor, councillor Akinola, for, for, against or abstain. Councillor Ambash. Four. Councillor Anderson. Four. Councillor Belton. Four. Councillor Binder. Councillor Birchall. Four. Councillor Byrne. Four. Councillor Caddy. Four. Councillor Calland. Councillor Carpenter. <coughs> Councillor Cook. <coughs> Councillor Mrs. Jane Cooper. Four. Councillor Mrs. Leone Cooper. Four. Councillor Ms. Critchard. Four. Councillor Crivelli. Four. Councillor Daly. Councillor Dawson. Four. Councillor Denfield. Four. Councillor Dickerdom. <laughs> Councillor Ellis. Four. Councillor Field. Four. Councillor Fluke. Four. Councillor Forbes. Councillor Fraser. Four. Councillor Gasser. Four. Councillor Gibbons. Four. Councillor Gilbert. Four. Councillor Govindia. Councillor Mrs. G Mrs. Uh, Angela Graham. Four. Councillor Peter Graham. Four. Councillor Grimston. Four. Councillor Mrs. Hampton. Four. Councillor Hart. Four. Councillor Henderson. Four. Councillor Hogg. Four. Councillor Humphreys. Four. Councillor Ireland. Four. Councillor Ms. Jones. Four. Councillor Lua. Four. Councillor Locker. Four. Councillor Mrs. McDermott. Four. Councillor McKinney. Four. Councillor McLeod. Four. Councillor Morgan. Councillor Moet, Councillor O'Brien, Councillor Richards Jones, Councillor Rigby, Councillor Ryder, Councillor Salia, Councillor Senior, Councillor Stock, Councillor Mrs. Sutters, Councillor Sweet, Councillor Ms. Torrington, Councillor Walker, Councillor Walsh, Councillor White, Councillor Wintle. Thank you, councillors. Unanimously and right, carried unanimously. 
Paragraph 4, London Borough of Wandsworth Annual Complaints Report 2017-18. Is the recommendation approved? Sir, could I, Mr Mayor, I'd like to speak on this, if I may. Yeah, Councillor Grimson. Thank you, uh, Mr Mayor. I'll start by saying, actually, one of the things that has always saddened me a little about Wandsworth is that, unlike many councils, um, after each election, we don't get together as a group and just share what we have just learnt about the London Borough of uh, Wandsworth and those members of the general public who have suddenly found themselves as councillors uh, but haven't yet become institutionalised into the place. In six months, sadly, that horse has, has, has run. Um, nonetheless, uh, can still bring that outside view to, uh, to what's happening. But one of the things that really I learnt during the election campaign was reflections on the changing nature of the contact between many of our residents and ourselves as a, as a council. Um, and although this paper is the closest I can get, I think there are a number of things here that will serve as a vehicle for what I think I learnt. I mean, the first point to note is, of course, that, council, that complaints may fall for two broad reasons, either because you have got dramatically better at providing the service, uh, or because people, for whatever reason, are not able to or feel they're not able uh, or, don't, or see no benefit in actually registering complaints. And it is very striking, as the figures show, that the level of complaints received by the council in 2016-17 was less than half of that which was received in 2012-13. Now, frankly, I think it is simply vanishingly unlikely that it is the former of those two explanations that can explain that phenomenon. Uh, although the statistics don't go back as far as 2008, in 2008, in the Comprehensive Performance Assessment, we were a four-star council, and we were one of the uh, only about a quarter of councils nationally that were judged to be improving strongly. Uh, where we, uh, just seven years later, as, 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 as we know, on the Audit Commission terms, we were a failing council. And although children's services, unluckily for them, were the ones that still had an external uh, 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 inspection regime, we know from the state of the streets, from the fact that we've lost our street bins, the fact that something relatively straightforward, like renewing your parking permit, has suddenly become a very significant uh, issue in terms of our service provision. That's obviously not a party political point. The same party was involved uh, in both of those regimes. But it does, I think, set a background as to what we are looking at with, when we look at these changing numbers of, of, of complaints. Uh, so if it's not that, what is it? Well, in my uh, suspicion, and actually it's more than that, it's from a lot of comments from residents, and indeed it's from my own attempts as a mystery shopper to get through the system. A massive barrier has emerged in the automated uh, uh, automation of the, comp uh, of the telephone system to this, to this borough. Uh, I found it impossible to report a dead cat by the side of the road some three or four months ago because I simply could not get to a point where I could talk to someone. Now, for me, it doesn't matter. Those people who can tweet will get a tweet back from at 1BC explaining what to do. Uh, those with emails usually, if not always, will get a response to their email in due course. But, of course, many of those who need our services the most are the very group in society, sadly, which is least likely to have access to social media and to uh, uh, email and other electronic forms of, of uh, communication. Uh, and uh, the, the thing that's really stuck in my mind, a blind gentleman in my ward who wanted to get through just to discuss whether the council could remove uh, a bulk item from his, from his flat and simply couldn't get through and eventually came through to, to, to me to raise it. And actually as an aside, I, I don't think I've ever been quite as angry as I have that that letterbox in the members' room where I put letters and others do hasn't been emptied for the last two months. Uh, and, and that to me is a, it's in itself is something of a sight, but it's quite a disgraceful, uh, a, 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 perhaps an indication of how we're losing sight of the importance of those traditional ways of contacting many of our residents. Now I believe, and, and I certainly hope, that the motivation for all of this is not simply money, not just in terms of saving a few pounds on the switchboard, but the much bigger saving, of course, that if you only have to deal with half as many complaints, you save an awful lot of money that you're actually putting in. I don't believe that that's the case, but if it is, we really should go back to our basics of thinking what this council is for, 
Councillor O'Brien does make some very good points about the efficient use of resources, of course, but the bottom line is whether we are making residents' lives better, not whether we have found a way of avoiding doing that by finding a way of making it more difficult for them to tell us what they want to make their lives uh, better. Just as one final point, uh, uh, Mr Mayor, members I'm sure are aware of this, but it's important. When we raise, as councillors, when we raise a complaint on behalf of residents, that does not get logged as a complaint on the council's complaint system. It gets logged as a member uh, inquiry, but it doesn't go into, the, uh, into that system. Now, I personally do something of the order of 2,500 requests on behalf of residents a year. Many of those are not complaints. I'm not saying they're all complaints by any means. But nonetheless, that is another syst uh, a set of information that could be going into the system, which at the moment does not. So the closest I can get to expressing all of this is to vote against this, uh, th this particular uh, paper tonight. I think members know that it's my intention to ask a question every year as to what our workloads have been as individual councillors. Every one of the thousands upon thousands of, of bits of case work we do do not count as complaints as far as the system goes. That, I think, is a mistake that should be corrected straight away. But the much bigger one is we must seriously go back to basics and say, is the automation of our switchboard serving the purpose we thought? In view of the blinding answer to that, which is no, we need to find a way of opening ourselves back up to those most vulnerable residents who are the ones who most need our support. Will you take an intervention? Sorry. She doesn't need to intervene, it's a debate. She can just speak. She can just speak. Right. Um, Councillor Belton. Councillor Belton. Belton. There's a general feeling on the majority party to dismiss anything Councillor Grimston says. Might be very well said and very articulately said, but usually to dismiss. Possibly ex-leaders get the same treatment, but I thought I'd back him up. That's just in the off chance that the officers and the majority party might take his complaint seriously. He and I both asked one or two people sitting on the front bench here that we should have a session during the induction where perhaps the uh, older members of the council should meet with the younger members of the, the council and give our own type of induction or indeed be on the receiving end of questions. Um, there were certain promises of it happening but it never did. Um, that's one where you started, I think, your point. And then on the second and more substantive point, like him, I've been recently trying to be an ordinary Joe, getting through the phone system. I think I was nested five or six times trying to get through one particular, but by nested I mean one, two, three, four, five, dial that, and you go on and on and on, uh, five or six times, and in the end uh, the phone cut out. Um, I had the same difficulty, and I've recently started getting, and I'm sure Councillor Grimston has had, uh, cases sent to me from people living in various parts of the borough who have said, I know you've been around a long time, Councillor Bilton, perhaps you can get an answer, because I can't from where I'm trying. I just cannot get replies on the phone or in any way. This is getting quite a serious complaint, and I fully count back Councillor Grimston. Councillor Pritchard, do you want to I'm just going contribute? to add one thing to this. The, the Adults Overview and Scrutiny Committee, we took a review recently, and that showed that the adults, people were very upset about not being able to get through, the older person generally, were uh, not able to get through to the adults team. And in my view, that is all to do with the difficulty of getting through on the telephone system. And I would urge every member in this room to dial the council number and try and get through to someone and see what happens. Any other speakers? Councillor Senior. Councillor Senior. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. And I do have a little surprise for Councillor Belton, Belton and Councillor Grimston in a moment. Uh, and I'm not going to speak for very long. I would just uh, like to point out 
Uh, an interesting use of statistics before I get to the surprise uh, that Councillor Brimson has made. He says the complaints have dropped very substantially from, from 2012-2013. They have, and I'm very pleased to see that. But to say that's anything to do with change, recent changes in our uh, methodology or in the switchboard is completely untrue. And you'll see this has been a substantial fall over the years. And you'll also note in 12-13 in that was substantially up on the previous year. And why was that? Well, because there was a particular problem that year, which as far as I remember, uh, was something to do with the, the and I may be uh, wrong on this specific, but it was, it was to do with introducing a new contract. I think it was a street cleaning contract at the time, uh, which wasn't working ideally, hence the number of complaints did increase uh, substantially. But they look again at the historical average in 2011-12, in again a similar sort of level uh, to the figures we get now. Now, I'll say the two things about complaints. First of all, it's important we learn from complaints. There's a section of this report that deals with that, if there are problems uh, that they need to be dealt with. I, at the moment, for example, am receiving a weekly report of the problems we all know we've been having uh, with the car uh, permit scheme. And that is beginning to improve uh, at long last, in, in part because I insisted that extra staff be brought on uh, to deal with the, the backlog that's arisen. So we are aware there there's a particular problem. But more generally, yes, I hear what all of you have said about the council's telephony system and on other issues of contacting the council. A piece of work is already underway to look at that and they will report to FCROS uh, or GP in due course to discuss it further. Standing order, Mr Mayor. Standing order number 26, Mr Mayor, I move that the motion, oh, sorry, the, the motion in question now be put. This is paragraph four. Right. Is paragraph four approved? Thank you. No, okay, so we need right. to take a vote on it. Those in right, all those in favour? of approving this paragraph. Those against? Two. Any abstentions? Any abstentions? So that was carried 52 to. Right, carried 52 votes to two. On a point of order, Mr. Mayor, could, could you clarify whether Councillor it is Peter on Brown. a point of order? Could you clarify whether it is in order for Councillors McLeod and Rigby to explain, as points of personal explanation, why they deliberately missed a vote? on anti-Semitism. Now they have been named no, I don't in the point so. of order. I don't think so, no. Paragraph 5 of report number 1. Proposed revisions to the planning application. Mayor, could you rule on that point? Uh, it is in reference. order for them to be named. Uh, is been named. the recommendation approved? Would, could, could you just clarify Peter whether Graham. it is in order for them now to give points of personal explanation? Whips have agreed. Uh, I've made a ruling. We're going to carry on, Councillor Peter Graham. <laughs>